Hi everyone and welcome to Alt VR. Today we're going to talk about an experience called Virtual Becomes Reality, a Stanford VR experience. So this is an experience that is free on Steam for PC VR users and it's incredibly fascinating for so many reasons. First of all, because the topic of VR research, which this experience is actually trying to introduce, is so fascinating. Um, I've been doing my own PhD in VR, uh, focusing on user experience or how we relate to virtual environment and how they can in turn change us and how we identify and so on. And yeah, uh, I don't really know where to begin almost because this is my true passion and fascination, but VR is for me, the most interesting thing to research because it gives us so much experimental control as well as experiential control. Uh, we can actually decide what the participants are going to experience, where they are going to feel present, whom they're going to feel present as, and then measure this, uh, the results of this on their experience, on how they behave differently on how they feel as themselves, how they feel that they relate to the environment around them, whether this is virtual or real or not. So there are so many incredibly fascinating potential avenues for research within this domain, uh, which is why I'm interested in personally. What I don't like so much is reading all these research papers describing these incredibly fascinating experiments and then no one has access to them. No one can feel on their bodies, on their selves, what it's like to take part in such a research experiment, for instance, becoming someone else uh, in a scenario and whatever. So you only get to read about the research results on the participants, but you are curious, you want to explore this yourself. And in many ways, this is what they're doing with the Stanford VR uh, experience. So it goes like this. You enter into the actual human interaction lab or whatever it is called, uh, at Stanford. And this experience is produced by Jeremy Billinson, who is a top VR researcher, uh, along with his colleagues, of course. And you then get an introduction. First, they show you some of the old VR head-mounted displays that they had, <laughs> because, of course, VR research did not start in 2016. They've been going strong from the early 90s. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's just that is a fascinating aspect of this experience, because when you're reading all these old research papers from the 90s, you're like, damn, I mean, I was just born maybe uh, for some of these papers. And I feel like VR is quite a recent thing. So what, what, what was it like for them at that point with that level of graphics cards and these uh, $50,000 uh, dollar headsets that ran on, I mean, what? Uh, <laughs> it's really fascinating to see. And that also speaks to the power of the VR medium by just having stereoscopic imagery and tracking that a little goes a long way in terms of bodily identification. And <clears throat> that's also, I guess, a comment on some of the research that you're actually participating in here. Um, a lot of this is based on having different virtual bodies. So, I mean, this is known to many VRChat users, right? I mean, you get attached to your avatar and you can try lots of different avatars, see how it feels, how it makes you change maybe, uh, the way you behave, the way you see yourself. Uh, there is a large community in VRChat based exactly off of this who actually, in many ways, I mean, you can call it escape into a virtual body or you can... Uh, call it therapeutic or you, yeah, you can call it anything you want, but it, it is something that's happening there and it's incredibly fascinating and we need to understand it better. So this is also the case for uh, this VR app. You get to try different bodies and you, get, and you choose one, but they also take it a step further. Uh, something that's very interesting to, uh, to notice and Jaron Lanier, who founded the first uh, commercial VR company, uh, wrote a paper on this, uh, I think that was in the 90s, may maybe even been the 80s, uh, to, uh, discussing this as homuncular flexibility. That we can actually have the flexibility to control avatars that have more limbs than we actually do ourselves. Uh, and they have a, sh uh, a short experiment of this that you actually get to try, where you have a third arm, uh, and you then uh, learn to navigate this or control it. So... <sighs> In short, this is just a fascinating piece of experiment. Um, they also have one of the more classical uh, VR research things that showed that people would be more likely 
uh, to help someone in the research room if they were first embodied as Superman, <laughs> right? So, uh, and you actually get to do this in the uh, Stanford VR experience too. You get to fly around as Superman. And then they explain that those who um, did fly as Superman were more likely to help uh, if the um, research person uh, dropped a pen, they would pick it up. So it's small things like this that shows that the experiences that we have virtually does impact the way we behave in reality. And we're going to discuss this more on this channel. Uh, I know of so many interesting VR uh, research papers that I want to really get down to the bottom of and try to um, convey the meaning of this and what it could mean uh, in the future. So for now, you can check out Stanford VR or Virtual Becomes Reality, a Stanford VR experience on Steam. It is free uh, and it's fun. Uh, you can learn something new. Uh, it's, it's a short experience, uh, but yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And Hopefully there will be more stuff like this. Um, one company <clears throat> previously called Virtual Body Works, now called Keen Tech. They are associated with Mel Slater, who is the most prominent VR researcher uh, ever. They've done a lot of interesting research on uh, embodiment. So embodying uh, an avatar, maybe of a different uh, race, uh, of different uh, gender, uh, size, age, and whatever. And seeing how this impact, for instance, uh, reducing racial bias, um, making people less aggressive. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of stuff like this. Uh, actually, the less aggressive thing uh, is actually prominent in this uh, VR uh, experience too, because you get to experience what it's like being uh, abused. <laughs> I mean, it sounds horrible, but there have been some papers that show that uh, virtual male offenders in prisons after experiencing themselves as the victim in a scenario of abuse they were more able to recognize fear in female faces afterwards and this is a trait that violent offenders are generally uh, lacking in compared to controls so this topic in general is something to look out for and this VR experience might be a good start for you if you are interested in discussing more of these things uh, or getting more updates on it, then this is the kind of thing that we do cover on this channel. So Old VR is meant to be a non-gaming VR channel where we discuss VR experiences and more of the impact on humanity in general and yeah, just the fascinating things that VR can bring beyond mere gaming. Um, not that I don't like VR games, that's just what this channel is about. So if you're interested in that, then please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. And yeah, you can find the link to this experience in the description below. Thank you.